Hi there. Welcome to the Small Business Coffee Break, the video series where we take a few minutes to work on your business, not just in it. Today we ask, how does a PEO treat independent contractors? With Stephanie Fortune. Stephanie has over eight years of experience as a PEO consultant and started her own firm, Fortune Business Consulting, in 2018. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get into it. Now we've talked a little bit about um, workers' compensation. We've talked about employment practices liability um, from the perspective of being an employer and, and the PEO may, may offer some of that to mm -hmm. the employer, to the co-employer. What about independent contractors? Sure. So this is one area that a lot of people have questions or misunderstandings about. So when you're working with a PEO, traditionally what the structure looks like is all W-2 persons, so all employees of the organization, so not independent contractors, not 1099s, they're covered with regards to workers' compensation under the umbrella of that PEO, right? Okay. And so with that relationship, what it looks like is you have a staff of five, you have a staff of 10 internal folks mm -hmm. that even as the employer, you have more of a responsibility more of an obligation. You're paying taxes on their behalf. Um, you know, there's a responsibility on both par on okay. both parts. That PEO covers them with regards to workers' compensation. They offer benefits to that group with regards to, um, again, them being W-2 persons. If it's a 1099 person that is not an employee of your organization, that PEO it will not offer workers' compensation to them. They will not have access to benefits because they're simply not um, an employee of that organization. So, for instance, just looking at it just as an organization. I have 10 folks internally, but I maybe have a marketing firm um, and one person that's specializing in my account. They're providing services to me, so they're 1099 with regards to my organization. I'm likely going to offer benefits to my staff, mm -hmm. but I'm not offering benefits to this marketing person because they're external, right? Okay. They're not a part of my internal team or they're not a W-2 person, right? So mm -hmm. they're not an employee of my organization. Right. And so the PEO views it in the same manner, right? I have control over what my team does. We do trainings, maybe toolbox talks, a uh, toolbox talks, um, things of that nature. Right. We're talking about safety trainings, um, you know, day in and day out. I kind of oversee when they start, when they stop work, how they do the work, so on and so forth. I have no control over this marketing person, right? Maybe I, I give them the task, maybe give them a budget, um, kind of a few criteria in terms of what I'm looking for, but I, I don't know what they're doing, when they're doing it, so on and so forth. So when you have a PEO that's looking at it from a maybe a risk perspective, mm -hmm. there's less uh, control, so to speak, right? right? There's less oversight in a 1099 person um, versus a W-2 person. And so when they're kind of assessing that risk, if it's something that they should take on, the decision is usually a no, because again, it's not something that they believe makes sense in terms of coverage um, and in terms of protection for all parties involved. Well, yeah, I mean, it, the, the difficulties and the confusions that exist between what an independent contractor is, what a subcontractor mm -hmm. is, and what an, what an employee is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is, is almost universal. <laughs> but, but I think particularly bad in the state of Florida. Um, and, and I know that um, we have had many conversations with small businesses about how um, the uh, 1099 and a W-2 are not what makes an employee an employee an employee or mm -hmm. an independent contractor. Those are forms, literally the numbers on the forms that you file to the IRS okay. and you have legal responsibilities for that. But what, what, what makes someone an employee or doesn't make an employee is actually state law, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it's different from, believe it or not, from state to state, even mm -hmm. though there's a, uh, a pretty good consensus mm -hmm. of what that looks like. Uh, and there's a federal definition for that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we find a lot of times that that is kind of one of those hard places mm -hmm. where people kind of like don't realize because they'll they'll want to hire that marketing person, uh, but according to the rules, technically you paid them 1099. Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't in, uh, you know didn't go through the PEO process, mm -hmm. uh, but according to the rules, they're deemed a statutory employee mm -hmm. and should have had benefits, and they got hurt and things go kind of wonky. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important that that conversation. Has Let's keep the conversation going. If you have any questions you'd like to ask Stephanie, ask it in the comments or her contact information is in the description. If you have any questions you'd like me to ask Stephanie or any other professional in their field, my contact information is also in the description and I'm always available through a direct message. 
See you next week for another cup of coffee and more questions answered.